Good afternoon. I am Dr. John Nordling of Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, and it is my great privilege to lead you with the study of proper uh, 19a, which is the parable of the unforgiving servant. And to do that, I would like to begin first with the collect of the day. So let us pray together. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, uh, when I uh, looked at this, when I had read the lesson of the unforgiving servant and then read this collect, I wasn't quite sure exactly how this fit together. Um, especially that clause about in times of persecution, I don't see that in this particular lesson. And sometimes they don't line up, I think we have to admit. But um, something occurred to me about the devout prayers of your church, and especially that what we ask in faith we may obtain. And of course, the, um, the prayer of the of the man that was to be sold into slavery was um, have, uh, have pity upon me and I will pay everything back. But that idea that when we pray for God in faith that, we, that he be patient with us. And um, of course the uh, rascal didn't heed the, uh, the, the similar request of his fellow servant but this is what we pray, and it goes back to the Lord's Prayer. Uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, on, uh, uh, as, we tres as we trespass against each other. Um, that is a very important petition of the Lord's Prayer. So that's how I think it relates. What we ask in faith, we may obtain. And what do we ask in faith but that our sins would be forgiven? And that's exactly what this uh, lesson is about, the parable of the unforgiving servant, and I think what this collect is about as well. So maybe you can work that in or maybe not. Okay, uh, John, let's now turn to the text itself. So the parable of the unforgiving servant, and just a couple of, of introductory remarks. First of all, um, I think when we're dealing with this text, we have to remember that it goes back to uh, the Lord's Prayer, especially right after the prayer, where you have Matthew, um, let's see if I can work this in here, uh, Matthew uh, 6, um, 14 through 15. Okay, and this is the only kind of codicil that you have. You kind of, after the Lord's Prayer, um, it continues on, and it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Father who is in heaven will forgive you also. And then verse 15, But if you do not forgive men, neither shall your Father forgive you your trespasses. So it's a very important matter. And that, of course, is, uh, is, is a codicil, something that is explaining the fifth petition, and forgive us our trespasses as we also forgive those who trespass against us. So that's one text that I would call to your attention. I think it really uh, bears mightily upon the text. Another one is, uh, now let's see if I can erase this. The next one is Matthew 9. Um, 9 to 13, which is the calling of St. Matthew. Um, and it is not just unique to uh, Matthew's Gospel, but I think it has a special point in Matthew's Gospel. There are also parallel texts in Mark 2 and in Luke 5. But it says there, and Jesus, as he was passing by from there, saw a man who was sitting in the tax office, the
the Totelonion, Matthew uh, he was called, and he says to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. Okay, that's what it says. Now, I've always wondered uh, if perhaps Matthew was ready for this call from Jesus, that as a tax man, he had seen just the horrible things that were done to uh, wretches who couldn't pay their taxes, and that very much uh, uh, is, is behind our lesson for today as well. That is, he was brought to repentance and faith, uh, so I speculate, by a lifetime spent um, bilking uh, his fellow countrymen of their taxes and paying them to Rome. It was the thing that pushed him over the edge to repentance and faith, and many times that's how it is for people who are brought into the kingdom kicking and screaming, as it were, against the goads. So that's something else that you might think of. Now let's look at the text. And uh, I've got to turn this off. Oh, come on. Why won't I? There we go. Okay. So um, it begins with this little frame. Um, I've got to find it here. So Matthew 18... Uh, 21. Um, then uh, Peter approached and said to him, uh, Lord, how often shall someone, uh, shall my brother sin against me and I shall forgive him until seven times? Uh, and Jesus says to him, not I tell you until seven, but until 70 times seven or something of, of that uh, way. We know this very well. Um, heptakis seven times, and then hebdomekontakis hepta, so 70 times the seven, and an, an astronomical figure. And one of the things, uh, uh, Peter bringing this up, why Peter, I don't know if I've figured that out yet, but if you recall last week when we were talking about the brother who sins, the parable of the lost sheep, um, the temptations to sin, there was, that's what our lesson last time was all about. So this is kind of a focus then upon um, uh, the command to, uh, to uh, forgive many times as we indeed are forgiven. And not just seven times, but uh, 70 times seven. Um, and that sets a frame then for this parable. Now, this parable of the unforgiving servant is unique to Matthew. You can't find it anywhere else. And um, so I think it's distinctively Matthew, Matthean. And what I've done is um, two things. One is this formula, uh, and on, on, on account of this, the kingdom of heaven is like to a, a man who's a king. Hamoi othe he basileia ton uranon. This is a formula that you see, especially in Matthew's gospel. I'm not going to write it down, but it's also in Matthew 13, 24, the parable of the sower and the weeds and the wheat. Okay, the exact same formula that's in the blue that I have there. Then it's in this present text, Matthew 18, 23. Then it is in Matthew 22, verse 2. Um, the king and the marriage feast. And you, you remember the story about all these people being invited to the wedding and nobody wanting to come. And that also is, the uh, kingdom of heaven is like to a anthropo basile, to a, a, a man, a king. That's what the Greek says. Okay, so, and then what I've done is I have um, highlighted in flaming red for you all these technical phrases, and we so often forget. See, Matthew is a tax collector, and he is the one that kind of invents, in a way, this language that he probably took from his earlier life as a tax collector, and he then um, kind of uh, theol theologizes it, if I may speak of it. So we have uh, Sunare log on, he uh, renders the account. Um, uh, he was uh, 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 and beginning to uh, render accounts, this apodunai to pay back, um, prothenai from piprasco to be sold, especially be sold into slavery, 
and apodafini, apodoso soy, and so forth. We don't have time to go through each one, and I will go through the text and point out to you there um, how these are used. But there's, it's technical language that I think uh, Matthew took over, and he uses it now in service to the gospel. So you have to have some kind of working understanding of how these phrases worked when Matthew got hold of them. Okay, let's begin then and work through this very quickly. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven is like to a man, a king, to a king who wished to render accounts with his slaves, with his douloi. And this is the era sunare, so he did it at a sharp point in time, or he began at a sharp point of time. Uh, and then verse 24, and when he had made the beginning, genitive absolute, and when he had made it a beginning of rendering an account, of rendering accounts, this is a present, um, there was brought to him one debtor, this ophelates, uh, no, one man who was owing of 10,000 talents, a huge sum. A talent already is a lot, and there are 10,000 of them. I mean, uh, a myriad, myriad means 10,000 in the Greek. Now, one little fine point is this pros enigfe, which is a hard word for many of you, I know, because you haven't kept up your principal parts, but it's from pros fero, and the aorist passive is pros Anakthane. So he was brought into him, okay, very unwillingly. I mean, it shows that he's being brought in by someone else and flung at the feet of this king, okay? So he is a, a slave that handles the king's accounts, apparently. We know that he's married and has some property, but this is all at risk. And um, he is, he is, uh, uh, un, unwilling to face this, this master. You can see it just in this one word, pros eneg thei. Um, okay, and not being able, verse 25, uh-oh, something, can you snooze that? Okay. Um, uh, me acontes de autu, so another genitive absolute, and not being able to pay it back, apadunai, a technical term, uh, the, his master, that's Hakirios here, ordered that he be sold into slavery. Prachthenai. And a, a very good parallel text for that is Romans 7.14, where Paul says that he has been sold, that he is in servitude under, uh, under mistress sin. Hippotene Hamartian. Paul is personifying sin there in Romans 7 14. Look that text up. It very much bears here. Um, uh, it has to do with this that he be sold into slavery and, not done, his wife and his children and all as much as he has. I mean, this is a dreadful thing. And again, uh, it doesn't take a lot of speculation to consider that maybe Matthew had seen this exact thing done when he uh, was uh, uh, serving Caesar as this duplicitous person and saw people that this happened to. Uh, it's an attractive theory that you really can't prove, but it would make a lot of sense. And that it be handed over, apodothenai. Verse 26, so the slave, Having fallen, peson, aorist participle, uh, at the feet of his master, you can add, um, did obeyance, pros ecune, imperfect, began to do obeyance to him, um, saying, okay, and then this is the prayer, I think, makro thumeson ep emoi, kaipanta apodoso soy, so be, um, be patient with me, over me, and I shall pay everything back to thee. Verse 27, and having been moved to compassion, splonk nisthes, from good old splonk nidzamai, we've seen that before, the master of the slave, of that slave, see that, ekenu stuck in there that way, he, uh, he released him, apolusen autan, 
and ta danaon, his debt, was forgiven to him. So af iemi, uh, here it means to forgive a debt, but we know that forgive is, of course, the way that we release our, uh, the people that owe us. We can either keep a grudge or we can let it go. That's the scriptural um, uh, image that is used of forgiving. And that's exactly what he does. He, he lets it go and he forgives um, the servant as well as this tremendous debt which he could never pay back in a million years. Okay, um, uh, 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 can you scroll down a little bit, John, uh, just a little bit? Um, put 28 up at the top, a little more. There, fine. And when the slave had gone forth, yon slave, see that Akanos, this is the second time he uses it this way, and when that slave, <laughs> like he's a despicable rascal, had gone forth, he found one of his fellow servants, his sundoloi, uh, who owed to him a hundred denaria, and a denarion, of course, we all know, we learned from beginning Greek, a denarius is a day's wage. So it's still a lot of money. It's a hundred days of working, like for me, all my summer's earning, spent teaching Greek and doing this type of thing, and my summer preaching, all of that was on the line, but it's not no freaking 10,000 talents, <laughs> okay? Just to put it into perspective. Um, and having seized him, kratesos, he began to choke him, epnigain. So he's got him like this, you know, and he began to choke him saying, Apodos A.T. Ophelis, pay back if you owe me something. Okay, but here the A is more like whatever you owe me. Okay, so again, it's a technical construction. This is the second person singular aorist indicative active from apodidomy, and then Ophelo again. Okay, so um, his fellow servant, Hasindolos Autu, having fallen down, Pesone uh, was beseeching him, saying, be patient of, uh, upon me, and I shall pay it back to you. Now, John, can you scroll down a little bit? Uh, I'm sorry to have, have to do this to you. Um, just a little, little bit. So we get back to that other part that's underlined. A little further, a little further. And you can see that these are exactly the same. Oh, no. How do, you, how do you make it? What's that? Okay, but you can see that these are exactly the same. They're exactly the same. They're parallel, right? So the, the, the rascally slave in front of his master said this, and so does the fellow servant. They're exactly the same, right? And that uh, jumps out at you like a, 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 brick, a brickyard. And uh, there is a little bit difference. Uh, this is proskuneo, the posture that we have before our Lord in heaven. This is, he encouraged him, but it means, in effect, the same thing. Um, uh, he, 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 began, he was encouraging him, saying, uh, be patient with me, and I shall pay it back to you. Now, how are we doing with time? Okay, you were supposed to let me know at 15, but that's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> And, uh, but he did not wish to, but uh, he went away and threw him into prison until he paid back that which is owed. Apado to ophelo menon. So um, uh, it's, it's highly incongruous to say the least. And when they had seen it, aorist participle, idantes, therefore, the fe his fellow servants, the things that had happened, Elupatheson. Now this means either they were very angry or they were sad. Take your pick. I mean, it's kind of like rage and sadness kind of share. There's overlap. And we still can understand this ourselves. Um, I don't know whether I'm angry or sad. Sometimes as I get older, I get more sad than angry. Although I still do get very angry at things. 
um, but that's another story, uh, becoming exceedingly sad or angry, and they went and they diasophason tokirio hauton, and they made manifest diasophizo, they manifested, made clear to their master pantatagonomena, another thing that's repeated, all the things that had happened. Uh, then, proskolosamenos auton hakirios autu lege auto. Then, having summoned, <laughs> proskolosamenos, uh, yeah, summoned, <laughs> I think he did something more than that. He, he said, you there, get over here, you know, and he sent his, his minions to take him too. You think he was reluctant before, now he's really reluctant. Um, his master says to him, Dula ponere, wicked slave, wicked servant, vocative. Um, all that debt uh, I forgave you since you besought me. Um, oughtn't you also to have had pity upon your fellow servant? as I indeed pitied you. Okay, so the language of, um, of alms and mercy, had mercy upon him, and having flown into a towering rage, uh, whoops, um, uh, okay, uh, yeah, so you got this word, or, 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 yeah, it's not working. So, okay. Um, uh, it's aorist, passive, um, masculine, singular, nominative, modifying curios. So in having become angry, his master handed him over to the torturers, the Bosanistites. I could go on and on about that. Um, uh, until ever he pay back all that was owed, so also your, uh, my uh, heavenly Father shall do to you unless you forgive each of you his brother from your heart, plural, okay? But this is singular, kind of interesting, and this is plural. Um, <clears throat> so this is not some type of, a, of an indifferent matter, but if we are in the church, if we're in the kingdom, um, this is something set before us. Now, what can we say about this that we haven't already said? Um, first of all, all of the technical language, of course, presupposes the, the redemption, the redemption of Jesus on the cross, and that, as Luther says in the small catechism somewhere, I'll let you, those of you that know the confessions better than I do uh, put this together, but we are all forgiven every day for the sins that we commit against God in heaven and against one another, all we need to do is ask. And do we ask? Uh, sometimes we don't even ask, but uh, nevertheless we are forgiven when we hear the gospel and when we receive the Lord's Supper and we contemplate our baptism. We are being refreshed and forgiven, and we are, really. But then, uh, having been forgiven, um, God seems to put us into a, a place an arena where we can be dispensers of forgiveness to others or not. <laughs> okay? I mean, that's how it works. First, I am forgiven between me and God, and then God sets me, such a sinner as I am, into horizontal contexts where we either block the forgiveness of sins or we are a channel to others through whom it comes with our spouses, with our children, with our students that I teach, or, or the students forgiving me uh, in the ways that we have. It, it's a big, it's kind of like a spider web, and we all are set in this nexus of forgiving and being forgiven. Luther writes somewhere, and I don't have the passage, some of you know this passage already, that this is what God does in congregations, is he creates kind of, um, <coughs> Uh, interdependencies uh, where we sin against our brother in Christ and then he asks us to forgive us and we forgive. So our forgiveness, of course, mirrors 
the greater and the perfection, uh, the perfect forgiveness that God in Christ Jesus does for each one of us on the cross. And it all goes back to that. It's not us because most of the time we don't do it <laughs> and we're all learning. So I pray that as you preach this text, that some of this will rub off and that you get under the skin of some of those hardened um, people in your church that don't forgive, that have heard this a million years, but that, that God would use you in your preaching to help them to see this in a new way by looking at some of the text, using the, the technical language that we have seen, and that all of your hearers in their own way would be like Matthew himself was when he was brought uh, by Jesus uh, to follow Jesus, and he took up, uh, he, and, he, and he took up and followed Jesus. So I pray this happens in your congregation, also through your preaching. May God grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen.